Oh, my screen light never is okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Fab Fit Friday. This is going to be kind of a Fab Fit Friday um, like I intended from way back when because I rubbed off a dress for my mom and I was really, really excited about um, making this dress because not only did I want to um, make a pattern for it so we could um, make more for her. Um, it's a dress that was in the Vermont Country Store catalog and it was made from a very thin cotton that really is not super comfortable. So if you're thinking about things in your closet and you um, love the style of something but the fabric isn't really like your favorite thing that's another reason why rubbing off a garment is um, something that you can do to create a pattern and then you can pick and choose fabrics based on what you like to wear plus rubbing off this dress has made um, this dress a year-round option now because I can make it out of flannel in the winter I can make it um, you know out of all sorts of things and I just want to show you um, um, let me just see here I want to show you a picture of the dress in case you're not following along with me hold on Hold on here, let me get the dress picture. Dress, dress, dress. Okay, it's a dress. I'm gonna switch my view so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So this is the dress that I rubbed off. And I think what I need to do is make it a little less bright in here. Let me, Okay, so I think you can see it pretty clearly now. Okay, and you can see what I did here was I actually made some style adjustments to it already. I actually um, made a center front seam in the back and front of the yoke. I also made it a little shorter because my mom is short. Um, and I made it out of a double gauze. And this double gauze is like super soft and cozy. But what I ended up doing, and I kind of did it by accident. I, you know, I know, um, you know, when you're rubbing something off, you know, I have ways to calculate the gathers. So this dress had gathers at the base of the yoke. This dress had gathers, um, you know, at the bottom of the first tier, like the, so like the tier, and then there's gathers at the top of the first skirt section, and then there's gathers on the last section. And what I did was I actually looked at the pattern pieces and I thought to myself, oh my goodness, I feel like she needs more. Like I was like, I want to make it more gathered and more full because I thought that would be more fun. But you know that um, less is more situation? Well, that's really what we have to do because I'm just going to show you, I think I can find a picture of my mom wearing the dress and it's not a super flattering picture, but I just want to show you, um, my dad saw her in it and he says to me, um, it's kind of eating, it's kind of like, there, there seems to be more dress than the original dress. And I just want to show you, let me see if I can show you the picture. Um, of her wearing it so you can see whoops let me do it this way whoops hold on one second let's just make it so you can see nice okay so here is my mom wearing the dress and you can see it's just too much dress for her so the shoulder the yoke is a little bit too wide which I can fix I'm going to do a high round back adjustment for the um her high round back in the back yoke and then I'm going to remove some of the gathers 
and the fullness of the garment. I'm going to make it a little bit less full through the, the whole skirt and bodice below the yoke. So that's what we're going to be working on today. And then I could make her a new dress that will actually fit. So this brings another point up. If you're going to be rubbing something off, don't use your expensive fabric to um, sew that dress because if it doesn't come out exactly the way you were hoping, you then have, um, you know, you have then, um, you know what I mean? You've ruined fabric. Oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. I didn't see the comments because I had top chat instead of live chat. So let me just say hi to everybody. Hi, Sarah Mae. Hi, Mary. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Francis. Hi, Riff Raff Ray. Oh, Riff Raff Ray says it's going to be interesting. And um, Sarah Mae's agreeing with me that it's swallowing her up. And she is also very sweet. So yay, we have all of this good stuff going on. So um, let me get started here. I obviously have to um, switch over my focus a little bit. Um, hi, Tana. Oh, <laughs> Tana said I was going to ask you why you didn't do a 12. Yeah, I broke my own rule. And I think I just thought this, so for my mom, this is really a house dress. So I wasn't worried about it being 100% fabulous. I mean, she can wear it, you know, on days where she just wants to be cool and comfortable, but I do want to do a better job. All right, so let us let me just show you what happened here. So these were my rubbed off pieces. Okay, so I have um, a front and a back, and this is what I actually posted the picture for um, in the... Um, you know, I posted these on the thumbnail to on Instagram for this. But basically, this is what the, the, the top pieces look. Um, oh, Riff Raff Ray, were you having a, a chat trick too? Yeah, I didn't even realize that it, I had to select a certain thing to be seeing the live chat. So, yeah, you always can learn new things. Um all right, so this, these are the top pieces. I think you can see these are the yoke pieces, back and front. And these are the pieces below it. Now, because I know that, you know, from the picture of my mom, um, um, Okay, so let me just, hold on one second. I got to find, um, uh, hold on, let me get that picture back up here. Okay, so let me just get the picture. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's look at this picture one more time. So I can see that, um, um, I can see that, and I saw in person too, that I can probably get a half an inch out of each side of the yoke. So a full inch across her high bust and shoulders. And we can also clearly see that, um, we can also clearly see that it's way too big down here too. So the easy thing I'm going to do is I'm literally going to take the back and I'm going to draw myself a line. And see what I'm doing here is I'm using the straight grid on my, um, I'm using the grid on my cutting mat to draw myself a straight line. Oops. Okay, like this. Then I'm gonna mark a half an inch. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pleat that out and that's going to give me um, a little bit better of a fit at the top of the pattern. Okay, and then I'm just going to slide that in. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of a half an inch right here. 
Um, oh, Pat's asking, is the extra fullness exaggerated by the bottom tier? It, it may be. I, I'll show you when I get to the skirt pieces what I did. But basically, um, I'm going to just, let me just tape this back together. Okay, so this is my back. And I'm just going to put this tape right around here like this. All right, so there's my back. Um, and here's my front. Now, obviously, if I shorten my shoulder a half an inch in the back, I have to shorten it um, a half an inch in the um, front, too. So I'm going to um, right here like this. And I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to overlap that as well. And in this case, you're going to see I'm going to have a truing up issue because the shoulder is at a pretty good angle here. So let me tape it and then I'll show you. Um, Okay, so I'm taping it. Like this. All right, so you can see it's taped, but I'm going to use my pink post-it note to show you what's happening up at the shoulder. I'm just going to put a little pink right here. Okay, and I'm just going to reconnect this edge, the, the neckline edge with the tip of the shoulder edge to recreate my shoulder seam like this. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut that off. So I had to fill in that little bit because of the angle that the shoulder was on. All right, so that's now taken out a full inch across the two, um, you know, across the back and the front. So that's going to get everything onto her shoulder. So I think that will look nicer. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do a high round back. So here is my back piece, and this, I noticed when my mom was wearing it, that if I give this a little bit more length at center back, and I'll just have to have a center back seam there permanently, it's going to bring the neckline up, and then the neckline will also sit more against the base of her neck, because right now it's standing out a little bit because it doesn't have the curve to match the, um, you know, the shape of her back. So I'm going to do my high round back adjustment up pretty high. So I'm going to do it like right here. Okay, so I'm doing three slashes. I think that'll be enough. Hey, Janie, welcome. So I'm going to slash this. And since I have my seam allowance drawn in there, I'm going to slash to the seam allowance and then I'm going to make a pivot at the stitching line. And I'm just going to open this whole thing up. And you can see another rule I broke here. I was skipping all sorts of steps in my rub off process because I just wanted to get this dress done. And this is my actual rub off. So you can see this is pattern ease. I hate working with pattern ease when I'm trying to adjust things because I just don't like the, the feel of it. So I'm going to use a piece of pat actual pattern paper and I'm going to, I'm not going to fill in those slashes. Let me just show you what I'm going to do.
Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm literally going to um, tape this on here for a hot second. I'm going to trace my final answer, and then I will have a new back yoke piece without all the taping and putting back together. So basically what I'm going to do here is, let me just, I'm going to tape the paper to um, I'm going to tape the paper to my cutting board. I'm also going to tape it up higher so you can see what I'm doing. I just realized that I'm going off frame here like this. Okay. All right. Okay, so what I can do now is you can see that I can spread each one of these slashes. I'm going to spread each one about three eighths of an inch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace the shape and then I'll have a new back yoke pattern piece for this dress and it will fit my mother much better. And you know what? And here's another bad. I probably should have um, done this high round back before I made the first dress to begin with, but I was in a hurry. So what I'm going to do here is to establish my bottom edge. I'm just trying to make it so you can see. Boop. I'm going to draw a line here and I have to be pretty close to the bottom because I didn't cut a generous, did not cut a generous thing. Okay, so I'm just going to put this here like this. And I'm going to use my tiny little paper, my tiny little pattern weights that I love when I'm working on something small. I have these little brass weights, whoops, and that will allow me to organize my slashes, but also not hide anything. So I'm just going to, oops, like this. And I can put a few more here. I want to make sure everything's laying nice and straight. And you can see this is why I do not like pattern ease when I'm doing adjustments because it does not act as nice as um, traditional pattern paper. Hey, Lean, welcome. Good morning, good evening to all. <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do center. I'm just going to draw myself a center back line, and this is going to show you actually what's happening here. Notice if I continued the center back seam up, see how it's actually veering away? I find this very interesting that it's creating this curve here, and then I can trace the rest. Um, let me just. Like this, like this, and like this. And then I know I can do my shoulder. I'm not going to draw the entire shoulder. I'm just going to draw the brackets on each end. You know, and I'll just mark where I spread just so you can see. Um, one, did, uh, one ended up being a little bit tiny, but then the rest were fine. So you can see how, see how it, it veers away. So now I've got this. Is going to be my new back and I don't have to waste a lot of scotch tape either that's the other nice that's the other nice thing I'm really trying to talk into my microphone because I'm continuing to get complaints about volume on the replay I hope everybody can hear me um, oh, what is Pat saying Pat is saying the high round back is timely for me I'm sewing for a friend who is in assisted living the adjustment I made last year has changed and I need to tweak her dress pattern 
that is true. Curves become deeper sometimes, unfortunately. Um, all right, so I'm gonna simply make a nice smooth line now. I'm gonna make a nice smooth line here. Some of this is exaggerated because I pivoted here. So I'm gonna fill that in ever so slightly to give myself a little bit better of a shape. Like this. So see, I'm filling that out, letting that out a little bit because I don't wanna distort the armhole shape. So I just put a little bit back there. But remember, we've already lost that half inch, so we're good. Okay, and there is the high round adjustment. And then I can, you know, make sure I put my neckline back. I don't know if this is going to be a good curve for my neckline. Hold on one second. I think I'll be able to. Hold on. Now notice, when you're using a... Oh... <laughs> Where's the wireless mic the cameraman promised? I know, we're working on it. I have a lot of things going on right now, so um, I'm a little bit distracted. <laughs> I'll get my cameraman on a, um, a wireless mic. Um, all right, so one thing I wanna show you about working with a French curve or any ruler, um, when I use my ruler, I'm looking for the space on the ruler that's going to agree with my intended shape. That way I'm not doing something like this. I see people do this all the time in in-person classes where they'll actually go like this, then they'll go like this. You know, they're like lining it up as they draw. It's really easier if you can find the shape and then just trace it through. So you can see here, I found the shape. I'm tracing it through. And I'm going to pop it on like this. And now I have my completed back yoke. Now, I do not need to adjust the sleeve. I think the sleeve will be okay. I can take it in through the underarms if I need to a little bit. But I think, um, I think that the sleeve will still be okay. I've got a narrower yoke front and back, shorter shoulder seam and a high round back. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna sort of cut this out. And here's another tip. If you're tracing something and you're adjusting it, the other thing you want to do um, is mark on here, you know, back yoke. I'm just going to put high round back so I know I did it. And I'm also going to write includes I-N-C-L-U-D-E-S quarter inch seam allowances or three, I'm sorry, three eighth inch seam allowances. That way, if I'm looking at this pattern later, I know I've included the seam allowances because I can tell they're here because I, you can see them, right? But I trace this. So I just want to make sure I remind myself, yes, my seam allowances are there. So that's taking care of my yoke. You know, now, the other thing that we adjusted when we shorten the shoulder is we also shortened the bottom edge of the yoke so I can also get rid of another inch going across here by also doing this. Now because I'm at a, um, um, a center front and back edge here I can just chop that off so I don't have to slash and spread here. I can just remove a half an inch from my center front and center back so I'm going to do that to make sure I'm keeping a like adjustment to what I just did to the yoke. Um, seamstress in the cottage says, oh yes, I have seen people doing that. And I thought that might be, I was doing it wrong. So glad to see you doing it too. Yay. Well, you know, there's a million ways to get, not a million. I don't want to be exaggerating here, but I mean, there's many ways to do the same thing, right? So 
pick the way that you like that works for you and ends up with the pieces going back together the way they're supposed to. It's a great way to do it. Mary says, I write all over my patterns, especially the data when alterations are done. What a big help. It really does help because then you don't have to go back guessing on what you did to each piece. So I'm going to write on this one minus one half inch width. So I know I did it. And I'm going to write it on here too. Minus one half inch width. All right. So in this case, all I'm going to do is take my quilting ruler and I am going to stand up so I can get a good cut here. I am going to cut off a half an inch. So now that will agree. And you know it doesn't matter that I'm cutting it off the edge versus slashing and overlapping. The pattern's not going to know because it's it's through this edge that, that it needs to match. And then I'm going to do this one the same way. Half inch. Okay, there we go. So now I have completed the whole yoke and top tier bodice, you know, and to the waist I have adjusted. And if I need, like I said, if I need to take it in anymore, I'm going to flat construct the sleeve so I can just go through the underarm seam and the, the um, side seam at the same, same time to take it in if I need to know. So I'm going to put right here, um, three eighth seam allowances right here because it's not on there anymore. And I'm also going to do it here because I cut it off, but I did not cut off the seam allowance. So I've got three eighths seam allowance. So that's going to take care of that issue. Now we get to the fun stuff where we're going to, um, adjust this pattern some more. Now, here's where I went wrong, or not wrong, but here's where I thought to myself, ooh, I need more, right? I need more. So you can see what I did was I made, and again, this is, um, this is sort of me getting away from my, um, you know, getting away from my, uh, my uh, rub offs, I traced copies of all of these pieces. So I do have paper pieces. But what I did was, if I take this back yoke, and I line it up here, oh, we can see it's different now because I did the high round. So let's just take a look at it here. Um, and see what I want to show you is, I added a little bit of width to it. So let me just, let me just, oh no, I didn't, I didn't, not to this piece. Okay, so I made a full front and I removed the, um, I made a full front and back yoke um, without the um, center, you know, without having a seam allowance. So if I wanna cut it out without the center front and back seam, I can do that. So these pieces are going to now have to go in the garbage because they don't match up at all. But the, where I made my little bit of a miscalculation was I knew I needed to increase this edge because the dress. Um, oh, wait a minute. No, I, I'm sorry. I'm getting myself all verklempt here. Let me show you what I did. On this lower piece, I thought to myself, oh, I need more gathers. So what I did was, this is what I wanted to compare with you. So this is my, my full, and look at, did I label anything here? No, I did not. So do I know which one is my front and which one is my back? Yes, I do, because I can tell from the top. So here we are. This is part of my 
thing that I should you should label so you can see. I almost confused myself by not labeling. So let me label this. This was the this is the front. Okay. And I want to show you what I did was And this is where I started to go wrong. The original pattern went to this pink line right here. And I thought we need more, right? So the yoke piece fits here. And on the dress, okay, so on the dress, this is gathered into this. Right now, it's the same length because I, I I rubbed it off. You can't rub off a gather. So I thought to myself, let's make some big gathers. So you can see what I did here was instead of just gathering this top edge and leaving this edge alone, I added four inches, four inches to this front bodice. So I added all of this. Okay, now this edge is not gathered. The skirt below it is gathered. All right, so look how enormous I made this compared to the original. It should have stopped right here, halfway, right? I added all of that. So that was my first issue. I'm gonna have to um, add gathers up here, add gathers up here but I don't want to add down here because you saw how huge it was. So that was my first issue. So how do you ga add gathers up here and not add extra down here? You can't just extend it out like I did, right? So I think what I'm going to do, because you know how I hate working with the pattern ease, I'm going to just line this up and I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to work with the paper. So I'm just going to line this up. And I'm going to cut it off so it agrees with my new, you know, half inch removed. Let me just cut this off. Okay. All right. So this I don't need anymore. And this I'm not going to need anymore. So this, I'm literally going to throw this away because I don't want to confuse myself. This is going to be my front. Front bodice I um, the minus one half inch width includes three eighth inch seam allowances so I need to make gathers here but I need to keep it the same down here so I'm going to use this line that I happen to have this piece of paper is a um, you know, I, I, I print a lot of test patterns. So after I'm done testing or if I didn't cut something out, I use the recycle the paper so I'm not just throwing things away. So I'm going to cut this up to the top on this line. Okay, so I can spread it. And this is how I'm going to get my gathers. Now, I liked I liked the amount of gathers that were under my mom's yoke on her dress the amount of gathering wasn't bad so I can still add four inches and it will be fine so I will use actually a strip of I'll just use a strip of this to fill it in like this so I'm basically gonna put paper in here like this and I'll tape I'll tape it to the, the side this is well this is the center front so I'm just going to tape it on there then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark two inches I'm going to make a note of my two inches like that. And then I'm going to 
go like this. So you can see what's happening here is like this. And then I want to true this up, right? I don't want to make sure that's nice and even. Um, oh, Lazaros, I am so happy you said that. He's reminding me to add a seam allowance, but good news, I don't have to add a seam allowance because this pattern had a seam allowance at the center back already. Did it? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, all right. Lazarus is getting a gold star. It's gold star. There is no seam allowance there. So I have to add it on both, actually, if I want, if I, if I'm going to sew. Add three eighths for center front seam and then see there's a lot of moving parts that's why I am ever grateful I have you I have to add three eighths here all right so thank you Lazarus for Lazarus for noticing that all right so what I'm going to do with this here is I'm just going to highlight right here there's the edge there's the edge so you can see where the edges are. So basically I'm just going to take my French curve and I'm going to just true that up. I'm keeping the original edge over here and then I'm going to line it up like this. And I think that that's going to work out fine. I'm going to cut that off. Okay, so now I've added two inches of, of, of gathers there, and then I'll have two inches on the other side. So that's going to work out for me. I have to add, I don't want to leave too many things. Um, it's also a bad idea sometimes to make notes to add your seam allowance after the fact because when you're busy, you may in fact um, forget to do it. So as a general rule, I would add um, I would add it like this. So there's my edge. I'm going to add the 3 eighths of an inch. And I got to go all the way up. But basically, I don't want to leave this for later because um, I may, in fact, screw that up and forget to do it. So I'm going to put that right there, my 3 8 inch allowance, all the way up to the top. Like this. Oh. All right. That's okay. So. Okay, I'm adding it, but I might not need it. So sometimes I might want to play with um, chevron stripes like I did on the yoke. I might want to do that down the whole dress. So I'm going to leave the seam allowance there. So center front seam allowance or cut on fold here. So I can cut on fold here or I can do 3 eighths. So I like to have options for things. And actually, if I screw up and I cut this out on the fold on the very edge, it's only going to give me three quarters more gathers. I mean, that's not, well, it does screw that up. All right, whatever. We're going to remember to either do center front or we can cut it out with the three eighth inch. And then I am going to cut that off because we have to fix something else. I had to true up the top. We also have to true up the bottom. So I'm going to just cut that off and I'm going to add 
some paper down here and we're just going to fix that as well. I'm really excited about doing this because um, I love making things for my mom. And, you know, now that I have this new pattern, I'm going to want to, I know I'm going to want to, you know, make her another dress, but I'm excited about, you know, using flannels and co like maybe some velour, some, some cozy things for the winter and, you know, just making her some nice things. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you here. I'm just going to true this up so you can see that it picked up down here because I pivoted out. So I'm just straightening that back out to its original shape like this. So that's going to be the finished pattern in the back. I'm sorry, that's the front. So I'm going to do the same thing to the back now. So notice... You can see that this dress is already going to be less, um, you know, swallowing her up because I've already removed five inches across the front in her lap, like where her waist would be. It was gigantic. I could literally pull out a ton. I mean, I want it to be loose and comfortable and I want it. The other thing about my mom is she has mobility issues. So I want it to be easy to get on and off over her head. I know the neckline is correct. It's easy to put over her head. The armholes are a little bit exaggerated, so you can get her arms in. Um, taking off four inches across the waist is not going to hurt anything because there's still plenty of room. So I've, I've added two inches here, but nothing down here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the back. And you can see in the back, I did the same thing. I made this full back and if I get my back over here, which is right here, I can line it up and then I can cut off the extra, which really is just a half an inch from this line, but I want to make sure I do it, you know, accurately here. I am going to cut this off right here. And now I've got my new back. So I'm going to write back minus one half inch. And we're going to add two inches of gathers here as well. So I'm going to draw myself a line. I'm going to slash it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the leftover paper to fill it in. trying to keep track of which papers are actually now really scraps and which are actually my new pieces. You could imagine with the number of patterns I have floating around this room, it's hard to keep track of stuff sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to tape this in place. Like this. And I'm going to mark two inches. I'm going to slide it in like that. So you can see now I'm adding um, the gathers to the back. And then you'll notice because we are um, spreading a pattern that's got a straight edge, the top and bottom are, they have less showing up to do. So 
all I really have to do here is just straighten this out. Hmm. Did it have? See the original, the original edge was straight. So actually I want to make it straight again. So I'm just going to connect the original edge here with the original edge here. And I'm going to just straighten that out. So I guess it does need trimming up. I thought it was going to be less of an issue because it was straighter, but actually I'm just going to cut all that off right there like that. Okay. So that's going to be my gathered top edge. Now I don't want you to think I'm cutting this off because I just want a little gathering up at the top. Sometimes when you create gathers on an edge, it does create a curved edge and you don't want to straighten it out. In this case, I'm going to straighten it out because it's just going to be a little gathering along the bottom of the yoke and I want it straight and I'm just going to do that. But like in certain situations, if you gather, if you spread slash and spread, it makes a curve. A perfect example of that would be if you were making an, um, a flared skirt, you cut and slash and spread and it makes a curved hem. So I just want to tell you here, I'm purposefully straightening this back out because literally I just want a little bit of a, a gather in here. And I think when I gather it, I'm really going to just center the gathers a little bit away from the armhole so they're more in the center of a front and back. So I don't need the extra length there that the spread causes. So I just wanted to point that out to you. I'm cutting that off. So now I've completed my front and back. Um, so the rest of the, the rest of the dress does not have um, any pattern pieces because I cut rectangles. So I want to show you how I'm going to plan for that now. And I have the notes, my original notes for my original mem, um, my original notes for my original um, tiered skirt are right here. So sorry, I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to erase my granddaughter's drawing so I can show you one here. I know she'll she'll make me a new one. I have to use this scrap here. All right, let me just erase this because I just want to show you. I'm going to draw a little dress diagram on here. All right, so we have, a, this dress has, you know, it has the armhole. It comes down like this. Okay, so this is, this is front back. It doesn't matter. So this is the front back um, bodice of the dress. And I took measurements of it. So the measurement from here to here on the original dress was 24 and one half inch across the dress. So the total dress had like a 48 inch or 49 inch, you know, loose waist. Okay. Then this tier here, so here's the next tier, and then there was another tier. So let me just draw it like this. You can see why I don't draw things. I'm a terrible drawer. Hi, Catherine from Mississippi. Welcome, welcome. We are re, um, sort of redesigning and taking in the dress I rubbed off for my mother. So if you want to go see the beginning parts, um, that's what we're working on today. Okay, so... This was 24 and a half inches. Now, this right here is gathered, right? So there's gathers here. There's no gathers above the seam. And then there's gathers here. No gathers. This is no, no gathers, no gathers. But then there's gathers here and there's gathers here. So a garment like this. Oh, hi, um, Isla. Welcome. I'm, I'm, I'm showing you this section of the um, Fat Fit Friday is me showing you how to calculate um, how to make a gathered skirt, how to calculate the gathers based on what the straight edges are doing. So this piece right here, 
And then this piece here, the, um, oh, did I write? Oh, you know what? I think I forgot to measure or write, see, I for, oh, the middle tier and the lower tier. I forgot to measure what the hem was. So I'm going to use the same proportion. Okay. So I forgot to do that. So this is 24 inches. This right here, the hem, based on my math on the middle one, oh, it gathers to 32 inches. Um, this, this measurement here, let me just do this measurement here is 32 and a half. So they're adding eight inches of gather across here and here. So I'm going to say if this measures 32, let's make this one 44 and a half. Okay. So it's eight more inches. Well, maybe we'll make it 48. We'll make it a, a little bit more because it's bigger. Okay. So basically if you're rubbing off or if you want to copy a gathered skirt, all you have to do is measure the straight edges and that will figure out what your um, pieces are going to look like. So this middle tier, middle tier is going to be a rectangle that is 32 and a half by whatever the measurement of your middle, whatever the measurement of your um, panel measures. Oh, Sarami's back. I didn't know you left. Welcome back. Yay. Um, so this middle tier is 32 inches. So this top edge is going to get gathered. This is going to get gathered in to fit the 24 and a half inch lower edge of the bodice. Does that make sense? And then this lower tier is going to be obviously be a little bit bigger. That's going to be gathered to 32 and a half inches, right? So we're going to gather this to 32 and a half because that's what this measures, but it's going to be, we'll say 48 inches. That seems like a lot. It seems like a lot. But it's gathered. It's okay. I may have my dad measure what the hem is before I um, before I decide. I can go back and measure the actual dress, how how wide the hem is, and then make that tier that amount, and it gets gathered to the 32 inches. So that's going to remove. So I've removed five inches across the entire front of the dress. I think it's going to make it fit much, much better. So I just want to make sure everybody understood how I developed, um, how I developed the tiers for the skirt. Okay. So you don't really need to make paper pattern pieces for this. You're just going to cut out two rectangles that, um, you know, that are these dimensions and, you know, I can play with how long, they are to make them a little bit more in proportion for my mom because even though I shortened the, the, the final the lower tier a little bit it still was a little bit long so I might shorten up both of these tiers to make it you know mid calf length, calf length but that's how I'm gonna fix that so kind of excited because I now have pattern pieces to make um, my mom a new dress in a scaled down version. So I'm kind of excited. Please let me know if you have any questions about um, these, this making these tiered measurements. If anyone needs help calculating this, please let me know. Um, oh, I'm so happy that uh, RT Blade 4 has made it here live. I'm so excited to see you. Um, and so, so live says, Mark, make it fit on your fabric and cut the width. Well, that is true because obviously if I need a 48 inch rectangle, then I need to, I can't work with certain fabrics, but I'll be able to make that work. It'll be fine. So I'm kind of excited. And I, you know, I bought, 
I mean, the fabric I use to make the dress, and for people who are just making it, let me show you, um, let me show you the picture one more time here. Um, so this is the dress on my mom, and you can see, oops, it's just gigantic. Where is the pic? Did he send me a picture? I know he saw, oh, here it is, sorry. All right, so you can see on my mom, the whole thing is just, I think, a little bit overwhelming. So imagine that dress with, um, Imagine that dress just a little bit scaled down. I think it's going to be much nicer. Plus, look at how it's almost on the floor. Whoops. I think I may shorten, actually, I can shorten the bodice layer, you know, this very top layer. Maybe I can shorten that about two inches, and then I'll shorten the middle one two inches so I can bring that hem up, because that's really, I think, a little bit too long. But I think it's going to be much better. I'm excited. All right, and then Tana is asking me, can you successfully use A-line tiers? You, you know what? You totally can. If you wanted to, you could make your tiers A-line shape. You know, especially if you're trying to create more volume as you go, you can definitely make A-line tiers. Um, but in this case these tiers will actually become a line because you gathered them too. So, and, and the other thing is you could have gathers, you could decide to put gathers on top and bottom of each seam. So this is just the design of the dress that I'm working on. Oh, Sammy has to go for real. Bye-bye. Have a nice, have a sewy weekend. <laughs> I like that. Have a sewy weekend. Um, so you could, you could do this design this dress a lot of different ways. Like you could have, um, let's do with, uh, so here's my actual eraser. So like you could have tiers that, like let me just, that are gathered here, but then they also gather into here too. You could have both sides be gathered if you wanted to. So it's completely up to you, you know, how much, um, you know, you want, how much fullness you want. So feel free to either gather just the top edges here and here and leave these straight. Or if you want to gather it here too, you can. It's, you know, the more gathers you put, the larger and more voluminous the skirt is going to get. So I'm very excited. I now have my adjusted back, my adjusted front, my adjusted back yoke. If you came late, I showed how to do a high round back on this. And then I also adjusted my front yoke by um, taking it in. I took these in a half an inch to bring the shoulder up onto the sleeve. So those are my adjusted pieces. My sleeve is going to stay the same. There's all the work I did on my sleeve. So it's a nice loose sleeve. I, like I said, I exaggerated the um, armhole a little bit, so I had to add a little bit more ease to um, get it to fit. But basically, I'm happy with the way the sleeve fits. I've got my yoke. I've got my top pieces. These are all going in the garbage now, so I don't screw up. These are my pieces. And then I'm going to save paper and just cut the dimensions of the tiers to size so I'm not like wasting a lot of pattern paper to make big rectangles that I could just as easily cut. So that is my my fun Fat Fit Friday. Um, on Tuesday, for Fit Tip Tuesday, I'm not sure what the topic is going to be. Um, but I know on Wednesday for subscriber q and A, I've gotten a couple questions on raglan sleeve tops. And actually, a few weeks ago, I did how to draft a raglan sleeve from a, you know, from a bodice. So this week coming up, I'm going to be showing a variety of um, 
raglan sleeve adjustments. Someone wanted to know how to do a full bust adjustment. Someone wanted to know how to um, fix wrinkles under the arms. And someone else wanted to know how to fix it if it's pulling to the back. So those are the three things I have planned for um, subscriber Q&A next week. So if you're interested in raglan sleeve adjustments, that will be a fun one. Remember, you don't have to come live because it does live on my channel, so you can go watch it later. Um, but that's, that's that. And I think my next big project for July, I think I'm going to do some bias sewing. We're going to go into exploring some things about bias. I'm going to be teaching a class on bias, uh, bias 101 for pattern review in July. So, um... I'm going to be working on things for the class, so I'll probably share some things with you along the way. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Oh, DIYer girl, hey, you popped in at the last minute. Catching up with you, what you covered, always good to see you, pick up tips from you. Yay, well today what I did was I reorganized um, or readjusted a rubbed off dress pattern I made for my mom. So if you want to learn how to take things in, do a, a simple high round back adjustment, or add gathers to below a neckline, uh, below a yoke. I did those things. How to gather, how to create gathers at the top edge, but not the bottom edge. And then I showed how to calculate gathers to make a gathered skirt. So those are the things I did today. So I'm excited because tomorrow I have a pants fitting uh, follow up for the Central Pennsylvania ASG. So I'll be teaching pants tomorrow. I'm very excited. And, um, you know, any day I get to teach is a good day. Super excited. So anyway, um, I hope you guys really enjoy your weekend. And I will see you again very, very soon. Thank you all for showing up and joining me today. I really appreciate it. All right, I'm going to sign off now before I start rambling because you know I love to do that at the end. So bye-bye. <laughs>